Hello chess family, it's me National Master Jesse James and today I'm going to be going over a very nice game I got to play in our weekly Grand Prix tournament over at Complete Chess. This was a game I got to play against Robert Skipper and well, I'm going to be playing the French defense. I'm just starting to play this and starting to learn it and well, this is a very nice game of me building an attack. Here we go. We started up with e4, e6, d4, d5, knight to d2, we got the Tarash variations. And I played knight to f6, I like to play this line. And here they typically do go ahead and play pawn to e5 here to kick the knight. In which case the knight just goes back to d7. Weirdly enough, my opponent did not play this. He went ahead and played the other very popular line, which is bishop to d3. Defending, just in case you do take, knight can take back over here. So pawn takes, knight takes, and this gives you a nice open position here. And of course the pawn is just taboo here, as after queen takes on d4, the bishop to b5 check is going to go ahead and do a nice discovery win here. So, pawn to c5 got played, and uh, well, at this point, everyone's going to be playing pawn to e5 here. And unfortunately for Skipper, he did miss this, and he played pawn to c3. Do you see what you play here to get into a nice position? Here you go ahead and play, pawn takes on d4 right away. Why do we do this? We do this so that we can make this pawn well, it's going to be unprotected here in the center, and the queen can put pressure on it. At this point, my opponent did start seeing some, well, some chess ghosts, as I like to call them, and he went ahead and played queen to a4 check to win the pawn back. This is definitely not the best way to do it. Here, you're just supposed to take on d4, and unfortunately for him, he missed that. Well, he thought that my queen could take on d4, but as I showed earlier, well, that's just a common trap. After pawn takes, knight takes, knight takes on e4, bishop takes on e4, the pawn is just being defended. Or if you do try to grab it now with queen takes on d4, again, we have the bishop to b5 check. And again, the queen will be lost. He did not know this and unfortunately went ahead and played the queen a4 check to win the pawn back. Well, simple chess. Let's go ahead and develop and get free temples off the queen. Bishop to d7, queen takes on d4, knight c6, queen to e3, and bishop d6. You know, I couldn't be happier in this position. I got a lot of free tempos for my pieces, and I'm just going to keep building up as fast as possible. And here he's more than welcome to take on d5, although I pretty much knew he wouldn't, as after knight takes on d5, my pieces are just very nicely placed. I'm ready to castle, and you can see he's having some problems with his queenside development. So, after this bishop to d6, he went ahead and played knight g2 f3, and then I went ahead and castled, hoping for a small little trap here. I'm hoping that he'll play pawn to e5 here, in which case I just went a pawn here for free, knight to g4, and uh, well, I guess the queen just has to move somewhere, I guess we'll go ahead and say queen to f4, and now we can just take on e5 right here, knight takes, knight takes, knight takes, and even, well, it looks like you're going to be losing some more material here too. Alright, back to the game. Well, at this point, he went ahead and did do the best move, I think he was planning on playing, but I saw him erase it, he went ahead and just castled, castle. And now queen to c7 got played. Here developing the queen and again threatening over here on h2. This time knight to g4 forking h2 and the queen here on e3. And he went ahead and played pawn h3 to stop this. And here I played rook to a to e8. Here already I have a nice idea about a kingside attack or building up in the position. It seems like this is the wrong rook to move over. But again, once you see the plan, it's going to make a lot of sense here. Plus, you know, the only way to really stop my plan from happening is to take here on d5, in which case, don't take back with the knight this time. Here we take back with the pawn, and now you see, well, this looks perfectly good to me. And yes, this is an isolated pawn, but because he's so behind development, this is already a negative, whoa, whoa a negative four in this position here. So back to the game, I played rook a to e8. He went ahead and played rook to e1 here, and now it is time to start building the kingside attack. Black to move. What do you play here to start building your kingside attack? All right, hopefully you push pause and try to figure it out. This is definitely by no means a tactical idea. This is just about how to build your position. At this point, we have a lot of forced moves here that start helping me build my kingside attack. So what did I play here? I went ahead and played. Pawn takes on e4. Knight takes on e4. Knight takes, and then he went ahead and played bishop takes on e4. Now, I do want to mention here, if queen takes on e4, the same plan will get played. I'm going to play pawn to f5 right here. And here, there's a few different places to move the queen. But either way, the plan is to play like e5, and then maybe e4 in the future, or just build up over here. Again, this is building a kingside attack. I have placed all my pieces over here on the kingside, and well, 
I'm going to start attacking over here. Now, a good line for him to try to play is something like queen h4 because I cannot play e5 right away because now it is white who's winning. Although it looks like a great position here, now I made the light squares weak. So bishop c4 check, king 2 h8, knight g5, and now there's checkmate on h7, knight f7 right here. And uh, yeah, you can just see that the light squares are just weak here and white is already winning in this position. With that being said, after this knight takes on e4 here, he did surprise me and played bishop takes e4. And this is really interesting because this is a more positional or strategic idea. Wait a second, can't we just play f5 here right away? This is exactly what he wants. And uh, well, I went ahead and played pawn f5 here. The plan is still on. I want to play f5 and e5. But his idea here was to play bishop takes, bishop takes, and then the knight to e5 here. And notice, well, this is a backwards pawn now. And if you can play pawn f4, my pawns are not moving forward anytime soon, and these rooks will not be doing as much as they could be doing. Luckily for me, I did find a very strong move in this position, which stops him from playing the pawn to f4. All right, black to move. What do you play here? This is a very nice strategic idea. Here you go ahead and play bishop to e4. And the idea is simple. We're just blocking the queen and the rook from defending the knight. Wait a second, can't we just play f4 here? Well, this is part of the plan. f4 cannot be played anymore because you get to play bishop c5, pin it, and win it. And unfortunately, white will be crying in this situation. Oof. Well, of course, white did not want that. So white really only had one move to play. They had to play knight back to f3. And here we're not going to miss it. Pawn to e5. And here we're building that kingside attack. Our pieces are slowly moving forward here. And again, white is just so behind in development here. It's just not going to go well for them at all. All right, bishop d2 got played, the only space you could move your bishop to. And here, I had an interesting idea. I went ahead and played queen c6. This is was the idea of, well, it was a pseudo threat or a fake threat. I'm seeing if I can go ahead and see if he can move the knight away because, well, bishop takes over here can make some double pawns, which I knew he would not like. But, well, I did underestimate him. I guess there was nothing else good for the knight to go to. So at this point, he went ahead and played rook ac1. Now, this is a mistake here, too. The rook belong, uh, belongs on open files here, so rook ad1 would have been a lot stronger. But that being said, he played rook ac1. And here, I continue with the plan. Bishop takes on f3. Queen takes on f3. And here, I did not play the idea that he was thinking. I did not play queen takes on f3. Queen takes on f3 will bring the game into about an even position. Yes, I do know that there's double pawns here. But in the end game, well, his pieces are going to be pretty much developed. And black does have a slight edge, but nothing to write home about. With that being said, what was the plan? Again, I was looking for free tempos and building my kingside attack. So I played, hopefully you see it, pawn to e4. Here, my pawns are going to rush forward really fast. Here they go. Queen back to d1. Pawn to f4. And now you can see e3 is in the air. Uh, and also f3. This is one of the ideas behind queen c6. Not only was it trying to help out with over here, but it was also thinking about queen to g6, going for lollipop checkmates, which is where you put a pawn on f3. And the queen tries to get to the g2 square. So, pawn to f4 got played. And here we played an interesting idea, which was pawn to c4. I like this move because, well, there's queen d5 checks in the air because you know he's going to play bishop to c3 and maybe even queen to d4 in the future here too. So, well, here I went ahead and played rook e5, which was not the best move. Apparently, the best plan here was to go for it and play pawn to e3. I must admit I did not look at this too much, although I did know it was something I should be trying to look at. But, well, computer tells us the right idea. After pawn takes, you can go ahead and take on e3 or play the very strong Pawn to f3 here, and now you see the idea we are just ripping open this king side, and this king is just not going to be safe. Already f2 check is being threatened, pawn takes on f uh, on g2, and of course if you take, well, rook just takes on f3, and uh, well, computer's already giving checkmating get, uh, moves now. Oof, checkmate at 9, apparently forced. How impressive. Again, I missed this idea, and I played rook to e5. The uh, idea was to stop the queen checks because I didn't want to trade for an endgame, and also rook to g5, and you can see here I'm trying to coordinate an attack on the g2 pawn. All right, here unfortunately he did not play the best defense here, and he played queen to g4. Black to move and win. What do you play here? We're going to kick back our opponent and then continue with our attack. Hopefully this didn't take you too long, but believe it or not, the best move here is 
pawn to h5. Remember, I want to put the rook over to g5 here, but you got to be careful. Queen to g4 had some threats. Bishop takes on f4 right here being one of the main ones. So here, h5 is just going to kick the queen away, and there's nowhere for the queen to move to to stay on the king side to help defend the king. For instance, queen h4. Ah, simple chess. Bishop to e7 here, and unfortunately, this queen is just trapped. Okay, what about queen over to g6? Again, rook f6 gets played, and the queen is trapped yet again. Oof. So, the queen went ahead and ran backwards, and at this point, well, let's just move forward with our attack. Rook over to g5. Now, e3 is the main threat here. A double attack attacking the bishop and the pawn here on g2. Here, he made a pseudo threat with queen to b3, threatening pawn to c5 check. What do you play here? No, uh, this is not so, such a hard one. You're going to play pawn to e3 anyways. He went ahead and played pawn c5 check. King h8. Again, there's no time to take on d6 here as queen takes on g2 is checkmate. And here, well, some people might be looking at pawn takes on d2, which looks good because, well, you're going to win a piece and you're forking the rooks. You're going to win another piece. Uh, but here, it is forced checkmate or at least winning of heavy material here. So I did not even fret about this. I knew exactly where I was going. And here, unfortunately, he did not find any good way to stop the checkmates, as there really is no good ones. And he went ahead and played pawn to f3. At this point, again, it's just forced checkmate. You could take on d2 here, but queen takes on f3 is game over, as there is no good way to stop rook takes on g2 for check and mate. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. This was building an attack with the French defense. Go ahead and give us a like and subscribe. We'll see you in the next video. <laughs>